Hi, this is Dr. Tony Cooper, and this is Life Without Baggage. In this podcast, I'll help you develop a stronger sense of self, develop firmer boundaries, and also learn how to lean into the gentle promptings of the Holy Spirit who can help you navigate life. I have dozens of bonus videos posted that will help you in these areas and also will help you develop stronger coping skills. In each of the program notes, there's a link where you can request a free digital book, Understanding Your Dreams, where you can find my other media and also where you can find my books on Amazon. Just a reminder before we get into today's episode that this is not a substitute for medication or counseling. If you're having thoughts of harming yourself or another person, or if this material triggers you, please contact your doctor or a mental health specialist to help you with your concerns. Here's part two of my interview with Rebecca Ann Perkins about emotional intelligence. This week, we're talking about why people devalue their emotions, the consequences of disregarding our emotions, suggestions on how to handle anger, steps for processing emotion, and also addressing guilt and shame. So here's part two. Rebecca Ann Perkins is a national speaker. She's been speaking to audiences for 15 years. She's also a life coach. Her mission is to inspire, educate, and empower Christians to grow personally and in their faith through biblically-based content, coaching, and resources. She has a master's degree in human services and over 3,000 hours working with people one-on-one. She is the host of the podcast, Truth Applied, and she's also the founder of Juniper Christian Mentoring. So welcome, Rebecca. Thank you. So last time we left off talking about how some people devalue their emotions for various reasons. Right now, people devalue them because they think, I mean, society just teaches us to think that they're immature or unimportant or maybe even sinful. Um You know, there's certain church environments that can teach men and women that it's really unspiritual if you're angry or if you're sad or if you doubt God or if you're afraid and you just need to have more faith. And so there's a real spiritual band-aid that or spiritual bypassing that can happen, which is a form of stuffing. Um, That's a form of stuffing. It's a lot of what I was thinking of because you you work a lot with people of faith and so do I. And it yeah. seems as though um, people that aren't just overwhelmed and s- spending a- excessive amounts of time surfing their emotions feel like it's weak, it's selfish, mm-hmm. it's um, unnecessary. Mm-hmm. A- and, mm-hmm. you know, what would you say happens to us when we don't value our emotions. I mean, we're totally disconnected from our authentic self. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. we're living um, a lie. We we're faking it. We're going through the motions and people know that. I mean, they'll, they've gotten good. A lot of them at going through the motions. They've gotten good at kind of putting on the, the act and putting on the face. And they maybe even think that's normal. This is what everybody does. They kind of power through their work day or they power through their social interactions or they try really hard to, you know, but eventually you, something happens, you blow up or you go into a spiral of some anxiety or some depression. And then, you know, like it, it, it always, it doesn't work to, yeah to devalue your emotions. Yeah. Um, They go somewhere. Like you said, they don't disappear. And you, you were talking about how then we go into addictive behavior at some point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. At some point there's something has to be done to kind of keep the lid on them. So I also use an analogy of sweeping stuff under the rug or pushing stuff in a closet. And, you know, eventually to, the the rug will trip you up or the closet door will you'll have to force it closed when there becomes enough stuff that you've kind of just ignored over the years or the week or the day or whatever um it really will eventually it will come out in some way shape or form and and 
and or you will adopt some type of addictive behavior that helps you keep those emotions under the surface. Yeah, to keep to stay in that place where it's numb or where yeah. the door is shut. It's like it's a lot of effort. And at some point, you yeah. know, people get depressed or they just. Yep. They they lose. Uh, it seems women especially kind of lose their sense of who they are. They do. Yeah, because there's a lot of. Self-betrayal in ignoring your emotions, Um you know, if your emotions are telling you, for example, I'm being mistreated at work. My boss is, I don't like when my boss talks to me like that, but you are, I just have to be a good employee or I can't afford to quit. You, you don't really go there and you don't really tell your boss that you don't like it when she talks to you like that, or he talks to you like that, that your, your real self, your real feelings are just, you're betraying them. And, and there's a, a real disconnect that starts to happen between who you are and who you're kind of living and acting out being. Um, so, and it's really scary. I mean, it can be really, it can be kind of scary when you first start to listen to those prompts that, that make you stand up to people or have a boundary or I need to take a break or I have to say no to this thing, this Bible study they're asking me to do for the hundredth time. But if we don't listen to what's going on inside of us, then yeah, there's a, eventually you do really lose your sense of who you are. Mm -hmm. Do you run into, uh, I think the kind of work we do, there's a lot of similarity. Do you mm -hmm. run into a lot of people that feel like you're not really ever supposed to get angry? I do actually. Yeah. Um, I do. And I, to them, I just, the Bible verse in your anger, do not sin. Like it, it doesn't say you're not supposed to get angry. It just says that when you're angry, we're, we're not supposed to go hurt other people. We're not supposed to go act out of that anger and do something sinful, but God himself was angry. So, I mean, anger is a very important emotion to feel. It's just that we're not really, even young men, boys aren't really taught how to feel it, how, how to resolve it, how to express it. You know, it's just, don't be mad. Don't be mad. Yeah. Like, what? I can't, I am mad. I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, that one especially seems problematic for people. They either surf it and yeah. everybody's going to suffer or they yeah. stuff it like there's something wrong with them if they get angry. Yeah. So it might be useful to kind of focus on that for yeah. a little while. I know you have a lot of things you could tell us, but... What are some of the suggestions you do with people who especially have been used to stuffing their anger in or maybe afraid of it? Well, yeah, I mean, anger is a really important indicator. All emotions are a really important indicator. I, I tell people all the time, emo our emotions aren't always true, but they're always real. <laughs> Meaning, if I feel really angry about something, it doesn't mean that whatever I'm angry about is the truth. Like, I might feel really angry that I didn't get invited to something. I don't know. That's just an example. And yeah. and I can call my family and get mad that they didn't invite me or whatever. And I can just act. I feel angry. So I'm going to go take it out on my sister-in-law. I'm just making mm -hmm. all this up as I go. Yeah. And make it <laughs> a thing. Yeah. yeah. And make it a big thing. And make it a big thing. Or I can go, man, I am so, why am I so angry about this? And I can look at that anger with curiosity yeah. um, and say, why am I so angry? Where is this coming from? As if it's detached from me. I mean, it, it's not detached from me. I, I'm feeling it in my body. I know I'm angry. But why am I so angry about the fact that I didn't get invited to this thing? Well, because it feels like rejection. Is it really rejection? Um I'm really sensitive to rejection in my life right now. Why? Well, because they haven't invited me to anything in months. I'm, you know, and again, and down and down in line that goes until it, you find out that I miss them. They've been busy. I've been busy. I see that they're maybe hanging out with other people, but it's not personal. You know, you start to kind of work your way through and you find the truth, the truth at the end of it. Now, there might be an instance a lot of times the truth, uh, when you find it, will de decompress your anger. 
But sometimes we have a right to be angry, right? Like my boss is mistreating me and I'm angry about it. Um, okay, so the truth is my boss is actually mistreating me and I'm tired of it. And I'm getting really angry that she doesn't appreciate any of my work type of thing. Now you have to stand up for yourself in some way, shape or form, speak the truth in love, or you're going to grow resentment. You're going to grow resentful. And again, it's going to come out in some way, shape mm -hmm. or form. Yeah. You're going to get so, resentful or you're going to get depressed or you're going to get yeah. into some kind of addictive behavior. So you, so, so it's important to be sort of a detective and think, yeah. okay, why is this, why am I having this reaction? And yeah. then kind of follow it through of, well, yeah. why is it this intense? And maybe we decide that it's connected to something else, but yeah. maybe we decide Hmm, this isn't right. And I have to figure out what my options are. Right. Right. Maybe okay. this, this emotion is legitimate and I need to do my, my best to handle it. Okay. But sometimes our emotions aren't, I mean, they're always real, which means we have to deal with them They're, But again, they're not always true. The, the thought that we're having or the perception that caused us to have that reaction is sometimes our own perception. It's not really what happened. You know, does mm -hmm. that make sense? Oh, absolutely. I'll give a personal example. I'll tell a story on myself. Okay. Okay. So one of the things that I know is a little out of whack with me and there's more than one, but this is one I'll admit. <laughs> we all have them. <laughs> yeah. Is um, I play pickleball and I, there, I play with a huge group and, you know, in the group, I don't know how many, let's say there's a hundred people. There's more than that, but let's say there's a hundred. I'm probably at the bottom 20%. Okay. Most of them have played longer. They're way better. They just this, that, and the other. So I lose a lot. Okay. Now there are times that I lose. I played well, but I lose and maybe I lose badly. But I played well and it's like, okay, well, I tell myself, well, this will help me get better. But there are other times I get really mad and it's an effort not to swear. Mm. Now that is irrational mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. because nobody's trying to hurt me. Mm -hmm. um, there's, mm -hmm. I'm not losing any money. It's mm -hmm. just, and so I have to get back to, okay, why am I making this a thing that I lost, that right. I, that I lost badly and I played badly. So mm -hmm. it gets back to kind of a, a perfectionistic thing. It's like, I'm not always going to play my best. Right. Right. Some days I'm going to not be good at all, but I'm, and then I have to talk to myself Well, I'm still getting exercise. I'm yep. still burning calories. These right. are my friends. And right. so I have to talk myself through it because some days it's intense. Yeah. It's a great example. Some days it is. And our emotional response to stuff is kind of uh, unwarranted for the situation. And yet the emotional response is pretty involuntary. So, yep. Yep. you know, an emotionally intelligent person can sense I'm having a big response right now. Let me talk myself down. Let me figure it out before I just, you know, go you off know? on somebody. <laughs> yeah. Or, or hate, turn it inward and hate myself for it. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, no, either one of those things is the right thing to do with, or, or the most helpful thing to do yeah. with the it's, it's, it's unproductive. So yeah. you have to be, you have to know whether or not your reaction makes sense because I know mine is intense and I know it doesn't make sense when that happens. Yeah. So I don't need to take action. I need to work with myself to get to a calmer place. Yeah. So back to your your situation at work where maybe I'm being disrespected. Yeah. And I need to look at how to protect myself better. Yeah. Uh, what suggestions might you make? I, I I mean, I know what I would do. If if I was in that situation, the very first thing I would do is uh, journal it out because yep. the intensity needs to kind of get out on paper and in a safe place. And I know I would probably have irrational things to say about my boss. So I would journal out like she's so this and she's so that and, you know, all the untrue things that are in my head or my heart about her. Um, I would pray about it. 
And then I would figure out the best way to tell her, you know, how it makes me feel when she talks to me like that. But I would definitely mm -hmm. decompress to begin with, because again, there are uh, initial onslaught of emotions are often irrational. They're often big and it's not helpful to act out of them. So get them out, you know, and there's a lot of ways to decompress. Some people talk to their mom, some people talk to their spouse, some people pray, some people drive and, you know, cry in the car, some people journal mm -hmm. and and all of those things are decent ways to decompress. But then when we're regulated and our brain is working clearly again, because it doesn't usually work clearly in the heat of the moment, mm -hmm. then we can decide what we need to do about that mm -hmm. situation. Okay. Yeah. So you then maybe you're ready to go in and say, I need to talk to you about something. Yeah. I, I've been feeling disrespected when... Mm -hmm. When uh, you correct me in front of the group mm -hmm. or, you know, when you mm -hmm. swear at me or whatever the thing is. Right. So right. we stick to the facts, but we're clear. Yes. And so, yeah, if you rehearse it, you're less likely to go in and freak out or start crying. You want to, you know, be in that professional mode and you've yeah. prepared yourself for it. Yes. Yep. And that, and it gains respect from people and, and it's standing up for ourselves in that way. Meaning we listened to our emotion. Our emotion was telling us something. We listened to it. We did a thing is actually one of the biggest ways to build healthy self-confidence. You know, it's like, I stood up for myself. I didn't, <laughs> I said what needed to be said, or I, I expressed my opinion. Again, we speak the truth in love. Um, that's what we're told to do in the word, but we speak the truth. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, when we leave out speaking the truth, it, our self, our, we, it just never, it never turns out well. It just never turns out well. I can give you all the ways that, when we, and we kind of already have all the things that can happen. Um, but yeah. I mean, that's a good, very practical example. Maybe there's somebody listening who's like, man, I need to go talk to my boss. <laughs> there might be. There so might with be. the time we have left, I want to make sure that um, you've mentioned decompressed or you've mentioned different practical ways to do that. You've mm -hmm. mentioned the value of journaling, which I also talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. Anything else you suggest to help people increase their emotional intelligence, getting better at labeling their feelings? Yeah. Yeah, that's the number one. I mean, any source you find that that's going to teach you about emotional intelligence will tell you that the very first step is to be able to name your emotions, to have a, a pretty robust emotional vocabulary. And again, not something a lot of us are taught. We think we're just mad or sad or anxious or something. But when you can really drill down to a specific word of like, I feel disgusted, I feel rejected. Um, I feel isolated. Suddenly, now that we have a word for what we're feeling, it's not as overwhelming and scary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know, I mean, we can't deal with something if we don't know what it is to begin with. We can't pray about it. We can't talk to a friend about it. We can't even journal about it until we've been able to say, man, what am I feeling? And super easy way to do that. You can literally Google a list of emotions, you know, and download a list of 60 or 100 or 20 feeling words. And I use, I mean, I test very high on emotional intelligence quizzes. And there are still some days where I'm going, I don't, something feel, I'm feeling something deep in my gut and I don't know what it is. And I'll whip out a list of emotions and I'll find that word and I'll go, wow, that is what I'm feeling. And then I just take it from there. You can even even find the ones with pictures. Yeah, you can. If you're helping a child or yeah. if you uh, people who have been through a lot of trauma sometimes have lost that um awareness of the label. They just know it's hor it's a horrible feeling, but beyond mm -hmm. that, like you said, the more that you can put a word to it, you begin to process it. You begin to take control of it. It loses some of its hold on you. Yeah. And can I say one more thing about a specific emotion, which I don't even know if it is. I think it's an emotion. I don't know what I would. Shame and guilt. Yeah. Yeah. 
shame and guilt are uh, in my mind in a little bit of a different category. Yes. Um, yes. They are emo they are heavy oppressive feelings that we need to learn how to name. I am feeling shame, I am feeling guilt, and we need to learn how to handle them biblically. And God gave us a way to handle those emotions biblically, right? If it's if it's actual conviction from the Holy Spirit, he gave us the method to just repent and ask for forgiveness and receive forgiveness, okay? If it's shame though, he handled that. I mean, the Bible says that there is no shame that comes from Christ. Um, that's always from the enemy. And so that's more of a spiritual handling, I believe, than kind of our everyday emotions of like, man, I feel really scared that my kids are moving out and I'm empty nesting. Okay. These, those are the type of emotions we're talking about when we say, feel them, process them, vent them, sit in them, explore them. If, if you're listening and you're a burdened by shame or guilt. It is my personal belief that that is a, a spiritual matter that needs to be handled because those emotions they sit on top of all the other emotions and drown out your ability to process anything. Yeah. They're, yeah. They, you know what I mean? They kind of make you like oh, yeah. you know, constipated. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're out of time already. You've given us a lot to think about. Uh, Rebecca, how can people find you, find your, um, yeah. your coaching if they're looking for a, a life coach or to find out about your free materials on your website yeah. or how can they follow you? Okay. So Truth Applied is the name of my podcast. Um, I'm on Instagram a lot. That's my social media outlet and it's the real Rebecca Ann is my handle, um, and then my website is rebecca anncom I'm and you know those spellings are unique, but I'm sure you'll put the spellings maybe in the show notes of this. I have the link for everybody. Yeah, and there are free resources there, and there's also I'm a Christian life coach. I'm a speaker, so I'd love to help. Thanks so much for for letting us pick your brain for expanding our understanding of why we need emotional intelligence and how to how to uh, improve it, how to build it. So um, I will I will put the link for everybody. And if you're looking for a life coach, I would highly recommend Rebecca. Thank you so much. <laughs>